Welcome to That Guy's The Podcast. The podcast that anthropomorphizes your inner turmoil, lusts and guilt. Today we are going to take you on a harrowing journey through a projection of your own psyche of sexual demons, shame and self-loathing, all of which are marred in rust and blood and intermittent air raid sirens. We are your hosts, Richie, aka your feeling of resentment towards your mother who didn't love you enough, and with me, as always, is Farley, aka Kunzi11, aka the hollow burden you feel you should bear towards others for the pain you have caused them. Farley, how do we sponsor this show? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Oh, I forgot your name. Happy 31st birthday to you. This week, Richie, we are sponsored by Witsy Coal Mine. That's Witsy Coal Mine for your underground <laughs> rusty burning hell needs. <laughs> for everybody's underground rusty burning hell needs. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And where else can we be found? We can be found on all your neighbourhood social medias uh, from Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. Normally under That Guy's a Maniac, all one word. Yeah, cool. So, for those of you who maybe didn't understand our intro, today we are talking Silent Hill. Farley, do you like the Silent Hill series? Uh, yeah. It's okay. (laughs) It's okay. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. So, you've played a few of the Silent Hill games that I maybe haven't played as well. So, what ones from the series sort of uh, have you gone through and played? What ones are your favourites? That sort of thing. Uh, Yeah, so Silent Hill... I remember I was getting... Um, when it came out, uh, the Silent Hill 1, or I guess just Silent Hill as it was, as it was called. Uh, we really loved it for its kind of um, uh, Resident Evil feel and its uh, creepy vibes. Uh, and then went up, picked up Silent Hill 2, 3, or The Room, and then I missed out the next ones until Shattered Memories uh, on the Wii, which I think is probably my favourite one of the whole lot. Uh, and then I've touched none of the uh, weird spin-off ones. How about you? Okay. Um, well, I played them out of order. <laughs> um, I um, I played Silent Hill 2 first, and it was just basically based on, like, Everybody saying, oh, it's great, it's a psychological horror, all this sort of stuff. And thought, right, okay, I'm in, I'm down. Um, in fact, I even bought a PlayStation 2 with Silent Hill 2. Um, but um, I never sort of touched Silent Hill 1 for ages, purely because, <laughs> sort of what you alluded to there, was I always thought it was like the poor man's Resident Evil. You know? <laughs> um because there was like, when Resident Evil came out there was a whole bunch of these uh, other games that were like Japanese survival horrors that seemed to be like third person static backgrounds. You had like Clock Tower and stuff like that, which I was just like I'm not interested, I like Resident Evil because I'm a bit of a prick in that sort of fashion. Um, but yeah, I played Silent Hill 2 played Silent Hill 2 to death um, I played Silent Hill 3 um, but before I played Silent Hill 3, I heard it was like a direct sequel to Silent Hill because the main protagonist is the main protagonist's daughter. I thought, alright, okay, so I'll play Silent Hill 1 before I play Silent Hill 3. Um, because, as we've talked about before on the podcast, I'm a nutter and have a weird thing about doing things in order. 
even though I did that in completely the wrong order entirely. So I played Silent Hill 3, Silent Hill 4, uh, The Room, which we'll probably talk about a bit more. Um, I've played Homecoming, which was the Splinter Company, and I own Silent Hill Downpour. I only own it. <laughs> well, at least that's a step above. Own it, but I haven't downloaded it, I guess. It's true, although it's pretty much exactly the same thing nowadays. I own the physical version rather than the digital version. <laughs> um, yeah, are we re- just really, really liked um, Silent Hill. It was more... I mean, Resident Evil was the obvious thing to compare it to, but it was more creepy than Resident oh, Evil. Definitely, definitely, definitely. But it I was also it... hard. Eh? Like, you felt like you were fighting the combat system, but that was part of the design. <laughs> you know, you just got like a crappy pipe, and you're trying to hit those pigs in the street or whatever they are and it's just very difficult <laughs> and and uh, uh, kind of scary and you, you, uh, from memory you couldn't really see your health either it was only if you started bleeding or limping so yeah it was much more challenging and difficult in a way that I don't know was it, if it was intentional or not, or not and I feel like um, certainly with the first Silent Hill and then maybe they maybe they lent into it with the later Silent Hills uh, it was just something just off kilter about uh, everything, you know, all parts of the presentation, um, from the kind of font that they use to the awful ways that the characters interact. Uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where um, it, you're screaming at the, at the TV, it's like, just someone. Someone in Silent Hill just have a normal conversation instead of, you know, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> true. bursting out of a, a rusty hospital corridor and then just have this weird, stilted interaction. You know, did you see a, a, a monster? No, I've not seen any monsters, James, and then just walk out of the room. It's like, oh, come on! <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> No, I didn't see a monster, and my daddy doesn't love me. And, and, yeah. yeah, yeah, that sort of shit. That, yeah, it's, and, I, it's... I, and I'm secretly dead, and I, I died three times, and oh, now my face is all bloody. And yeah, I, I also look like your dead wife as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm changing age every time you meet me. Yep, yeah. and I seem to have I'm no also... memory of. <laughs> yeah, an anthropomorphic version of your lust uh, for other women, or so, 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 that, that sort of shit. Yeah, I mean, I think that's like what you're talking about—the off kilter stuff—is is a very, very good way to sort of define the Silent Hill series as well. It's just there was things that just put you on edge and put you off balance. Yeah, fair enough. There's a game underneath it, which was hit the monsters or shoot the monsters or whatever you're going to do but you were like put into this weird feeling of just being like scared to even progress but you have to progress um and uh, yeah I'm mean, that's exactly it and I think I've seen like um or heard or read or something along the lines of like yes there was limitations on the old PlayStation but they they did lean into it uh, to try and take these shit technologies and make them you know work in their favor for making you feel uneasy but in, in general the whole series does just make you feel quite uneasy anyway um, regardless of it being on a PlayStation 1 with uh, polygon graphics or if it's on the 360, you know, that sort of thing. Which is, of course, the highest and latest newest generation of uh, machines in 360. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything after that uh, just isn't very good. Um, <laughs> but 
in case there is somebody out there, I mean, it's, we've, it's actually been quite a while since we got the last one. Um, what is Silent Hill? There is, there, it's a really weird series. Uh, and then we've got five, six, seven, eight. Eight main series games, if you like. A couple of re-releases, a couple of weird uh, spin-offs that we'll talk about. And some of them are really closely related to each other. Um, they weave in some of the same characters, yep. some of the same storylines. There's a bit of a rebooting. And then some are just almost nothing to do uh, with the rest. Not even set in Silent Hill, in some cases. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, uh, but broadly speaking, um, I'm sure we'll touch on those. What, what's the main plot of Silent Hill? Spoilers oh. <clears throat> uh, I mean, Silent Hill. Don't, don't go into the ins and outs of the stories and the things. That, but, but you know, if if you were trying to explain to your mate, if you're trying to yeah, explain to your it? mate who'd never played it, yeah. it's it's kind of like a horror movie series, um, and the main bad guy isn't an evil clown or. A guy with knives in his hand that haunts your dreams. The main bad guy is this town, Silent Hill. That's yeah. probably the best way to put it. Yeah, and in most of the games, there's at least two versions of the town. Um, uh, one is a creepy, foggy, abandoned, where is everybody version, but otherwise kind of normal. And then the other version is a hellish, decrepit, Covered in rust and blood, yeah, yeah, uh, version of it, which sort of has the same, uh, the same layout. Um, and in the first game, um, which I think perhaps did it, uh, our shattered memories does it really well as well. You, you, as you progress the story, you kind of trigger switching between these two. And in the first one, it would be uh, an air raid siren would go off as you were walking down a corridor and it would turn from the normal world which had some creepy monsters in it into the um, alternate dimension world um, which and also really... had creepy monsters <laughs> yeah which had creepy monsters and creepy monsters but also elements of the real world uh, yeah elements of the real world in it um, so you, you would have the same layout and the same map yeah. And so you would visit, uh, like, it, you would visit locations uh, in Silent Hill. Yes, you had the overworld, which was foggy, but you would go to an apartment building, or you go to a hospital, a recurring place that you would end up going, um, and you would go through. And as you would play through the game, you would do some puzzles and things like that. And likely, what would happen was after you got to a certain point in the game, there would be a changeover, and it would be the same map, same layout, except everything was all weird and wrong and it was even more decrepit. It's like um, it had gone through a fire and then it gone rusty and then <laughs> all covered in blood and then you're sort of going through this alternate version of the location so, or, or, or flesh. They love doing stuff that's all fleshy as well like where it was once a hospital room instead of stretchers is now flesh shaped pillows that w could be stretchers sort of things they love that yeah. sort of stuff you know uh, but yeah, yeah. That, 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 that that's a, a recurring theme in all of them is the real Silent Hill if it is the real one and then the alternate version as well yeah and then through I don't, uh, this is one of my talking points um similar to other Konami games on the PlayStation. I'm not convinced <laughs> if it was a very clever game in terms of the um, the story and the idea behind it or whether it was just convoluted. And I feel I feel very similar about um, Metal Gear Metal the Metal Gear series. <laughs> um, you know, is is it <laughs> is it a you know, clever, well authored thing, or is it just some stuff's lost in translation? Lost in translation, and it's just a bit convoluted because it's only. Um. Anyway, I'll just just speak for myself. 
I didn't really piece together what was happening in any of the Silent Hill games, with the exception of probably Shattered Memories, until the end and having a think about it and maybe a replay. Like you don't. It, I mean, even then, I still <laughs> had to consult the fucking animals of the the hive mind that is the internet for people to sort of release some of those clues because some of those things I just didn't see, and some people, you know, like they swear blind about all of the imagery. And I mean, yes, um, I get what you're saying about loss in translation. However, and I, I might be entirely wrong in this, I feel like the Silent Hill, at least from Silent Hill 2 onwards, everything was done in English anyway. I really say so. Yeah. In, um, so the characters would be speaking in American English translations yeah. with Japanese subtitles to Japan. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, and again, you probably correct me if I'm wrong there, but I feel like that's the case because I remember like the actors for like the voice actors for James and um, what's her face, Mary they were both American and they were doing the mocap at the same time and all this sort of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but that's because I had the director's cut of uh, Silent Hill. I think I think you actually watched the DVD with me. <laughs> Maybe it's the sort of thing we do. I have that about. recollection, and I've extrapolated that it must have been in English for the entirety <laughs> of the game. <laughs> um, so throughout the course of most of the Silent Hill games, um, it transpires that you've not just. Uh, stumbled into uh, some alternate dimension world, um, but actually something about Silent Hill um, and a dark presence within it, which is sort of explained with all this crappy, culty birthing of a god, spirit splitting nonsense. Um, But actually the town reflects the protagonist's psyche, and so all the kind of boss fights or elements or even the monsters you see are some part of normally some horrific repressed trauma so uh, yeah there's not a single character in in Silent Hill who's not suffered some kind of abuse uh uh, is committed crimes uh, yeah committed (laughs) crimes or PTSD yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) yeah um drug addiction uh you know murdered a kid mutilated dogs all just, yeah there's there's very few likable characters that you'll find in silent hill but most of the um uh, uh most of the games are based around this sort of sort of coherent bit uh in that there's this ceremony where they impregnated a little girl with the god and then in the riching in the ritual to birth this god her spirit shatters and then basically that's what causes the nastiness in in the silent hill area and that's that's the kind of story that a lot of the games touch on come back to remake and revisit yeah i mean so it's also what the movies kind of touched on as well or, or tried to grab onto because it was probably the almost as you said coherent thread to grab onto at that point yeah. as well uh, and that yeah. is that's the story behind Heather um, or Alyssa uh, she, she's she got this kind of split personality sort of split duality and she's probably the only likeable character in the game because she's the actual one who hasn't done anything awful or has some awful trauma had happened to her, apart from like having to go through Silent Hill. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, if you care more, definitely read into it. We're not going to try and break down that fucking well of the storyline of Heather versus Alyssa and all that sort of stuff. Um, I actually speak very very quickly to gloss on the movies because we don't want to dwell on them too much. I quite liked the second movie. They were okay. Yeah. They were they were both okay. Um, as we just discussed, uh, it's a challenge to bring you know brilliant um, for cinematography and all the kind of he creepiness that it brings. Uh, you know, would translate well to the 
to the screen, but the plot nonsense it just would not make sense. So I, yeah, I think they did quite a good job. My only issue, and I think we talked about this when it, when um, Silent Hill 2 came out, is that uh, it, it kind of ends. The second one ends with them essentially having a Mortal Kombat <laughs> fight, <laughs> right, in a literal arena. Um, between Pyramid Head and I can't even remember now. You know they're doing sort of kung fu moves. Nemesis, um, which isn't from Resident Evil Three. Yeah, basically, <laughs> which, which, which wasn't very silent here. But other things they nailed. I think they nailed. Um, yeah, they nailed really well. Um, some solid films, I think. But unfortunately, I, as I mentioned earlier, Silent Hill was scary um, and creepy. Uh, but the films, I think, aren't are less scary. And well, yeah, exactly. And I think it's you. You touched on it just before, and that is because you're playing it, and the controls aren't great. It is the Resident Evil tank controls, you know. So, I think part of the scariness definitely comes from the fact that it's a computer game versus watching a movie. You know, so I, I, I would definitely say that translating the fact that you're playing this and trying to get through and solve puzzles and then, you know, like computer games designers love to shit on you as well. It's just like, oh, you think you've solved the hospital? Well, why don't you try Hospital Mark II with all of the locked doors now and uh, here's a fleshy pillow scratcher and all that sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. 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 Um... And it also brings, uh, had some great tricks as well. Uh, so noises popping off, um, straight up just walking into into you know a room which just has a giant head uh, whose vibrating eyeballs follow you around. Uh, <laughs> stuff like um, you know wheelchairs, rusty wheelchairs on their side with the wheels still oh, spinning. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> that fucking creepy rabbit from <laughs> Silent Hill 3, is it? Yeah, 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 the pink rabbit bunny suit with the blood the, red the dick's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so some of, it, some of it really is, you know, um, not exactly subtle. Uh, and quite tropey these days, um, uh, stuff. Um, but other stuff's more in the background. And I think the game that absolutely did this the best was uh, Silent Hill 4, The Room. It's a bit of an outlier. Uh, in that it's not really set in Silent Hill, and there are a few overlap, there are a few background characters which appear. But essentially, with that one, you are stuck in a room. Um, and as the game went on, and you kind of got more desperate and demented, there'd be loads of effects in the apartment, and those would really fuck you up. Yeah, cause it used to be that in between the horrible levels, you'd come back and your apartment would be like a sanctuary. Okay, end of the level. Um, do some healing, here's my place to relax and as the game went on um, you know just you'd look out the apartment window and sometimes a disembodied head could just fall past or there'd be somebody over the street pointing at you or uh, something would be you get moved. a phone call or, or oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that sort of stuff yeah so Silent Hill 4 uh, just to very quickly sort of interject there I was actually just come out again um, on the PC. I played it originally on the PC many years ago um, but it's come out again good old games. GOG have uh, like redone it so that it can be played on the PC again um, yeah. and I got it the other day there and I'm just debating whether or not I want to go through this Yeah, because <laughs> I remember the game it, it does have a more gamey appeal to it because I think there's like, I think there's seven other levels that you go to and it features seven other people um, yeah. and when you do that the first time round you're basically you're visiting their dreams somehow from your apartment you're able to walk through a hole in your bathroom into someone else's dream and that's where it gets a bit creepy um, and basically I think they all die and then you revisit them again in the hellish version of their purgatory dream where they're evil ghosts that are trying to kill you as well. Yeah. Um like and yeah. sliding around sliding around on the floor like a Japanese hair girl. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Um, There's uh, lots of nods to Japanese uh, horror films like the the, the ring and things of like that in there. 
And then um, oh, Silent Hill 4 has this stompy con- conjoined twin babies, doesn't it? Um, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, imagine, you know, two enlarged baby heads and then a half torso. And then what they do is they stomp around and when they see you, they uh, point at you <gasps> with a horrific scream and then yes. chase after you. They're, it's like they're a sort of weird gorilla looking thing as well yeah, yeah. oh god fucking hell fucking that is terrifying oh man terrifying. yeah oh that shrill shriek when they just point at you it's yeah. like the the villagers in uh, Resident Evil 4 no he is well you know <laughs> what except it's like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> except this is like a scream, and I'm not going to try and scream on a podcast. <laughs> it's a guttural, horrible, uh, yeah. guttural, guttural scream. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. <laughs> neither of us have played Origins. No, well, I kind of played it, um, okay. as in I was around at a friend's house when they were playing it, um, and a. Uh, all I remember is it was Travis the trucker and he wore flannel yeah. and a red hat. Or did he yeah. have a hat? I think that's yeah, about it. Yeah. yeah. And I remember I remember talk of it sort of like trying to make sense of the um, Silent Hill stuff. like So yeah, you could it's... actually fight monsters that James had fought before and things like that. Uh, I I can't really remember. I think Pyramid Head so turns a, up. It's a prequel. Um, that that essentially happens the evening of the ritual, which kicks everything off. But um, again, because there's so much, either because it's convoluted, or because there's so much space for interpretation in these games. Silent, the Silent Hill series is one of those ones where you know people can go off online about. This and that. A lot, um, I a think, lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think Origins really annoyed them all because um, <laughs> all of their head them. cannon had got messed <laughs> up. <laughs> it, messed a, it messed a lot of things up. Before we started recording, I was doing a bit of reading about Origins. So it's the one I've not, neither of us have touched. Um, and apparently, the um, make and model of Harry's Jeep and the fact that. Uh, Origins put some years on when things happen, just ruins everything. Um, yeah. Okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> the making model of Harry's <laughs> yeah. Jeep. <laughs> yeah. For so, you know, so in Origins, Lisa should be something like 14, uh, which is a bit creepy because she's, she, we're led to believe she has sex with Dr. Kaufman. She doesn't look for it. Yeah, so I think it messes things up, but it was an attempt to, to try and make things a bit more coherent, I guess, or have a look at what happened. And then Shattered Memories is kind of a reimagining. Um, and I guess I'll talk about that one for a bit. Uh, because it's my favourite for, you know, for a whole host of reasons. It's the one that I one. haven't played. Um, yeah. Despite yeah. me recommending it, probably bought it for you. So you probably have it somewhere around your house. You've just not touched it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Uh, but what's different about it is there is no combat or fighting. There is just panicked running away, and uh, it, it starts with you sitting on a psychologist's um, couch, uh, and he asks you a few questions. And how you answer those questions will affect some of the details in the in the uh, in the game. Um, and it's really good. And in late Sun Hills. They each had a bit of a gimmick. So downpour obviously was all about rain and shattered memory was all about frost. So instead of things going creaky and rusty, um, the frost would creep in and distort the world. Uh, and then you had these kind of run and, run and gun sections. Um, but yeah, it's probably my favorite one. And you'd think that um, you know just running away and not having combat would be, I don't know, easy mode or not as scary, but actually it's, it's horrifying particularly because the waggle mechanics were not fantastic oh because this was on the wii wasn't it <laughs> yeah yeah so when you get caught by these things you know you go into the frost world and then you kind of you kind of enter the running running mode um and when they get hold of you you are 
flailing your arms around because it doesn't work very well, um, and but also because you're really scared, uh, and you just want to, you know, you just want to keep running and running and running and running until you get back to um, back to normal world. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, what was great about it is using, I think, use your phone as a camera. There are hidden spirits around. Um, it, yeah, really nice attention to detail and and a hallmark of the whole series. I think is they take you to some fairly stereotypical creepy places and whoa that you don't want to be um so there's hospitals and schools uh and a fairground what else is there uh and uh, kind of midwest american suburbia uh so yeah just all fairly creepy places under normal circumstances, but definitely, <laughs> um, yeah, definitely in this um, kind of hell mode. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I think I just uh, missed out in that one because I think it it come to the point where I wasn't really playing anything on the Wii, or, or I, I had a, a hatred for the Wii, um, and also I think uh, it came out in the PlayStation Two, but I think my PlayStation Two was dead by then or wasn't working or something like that but yeah it was just one of these ones that I, I kind of missed and glossed over and never really touched on at all um, but that being said um, I did do Homecoming mm-hmm. did you ever touch on Homecoming or have you seen anything or played it or anything like that uh, no, no I think uh, I may have watched part of a Let's Play, but that's it. Okay. Well, what I would say is Homecoming, uh, it was like, it was a splinter company that did this one, so it wasn't really, uh, is it, I forget what the name of the, the, name of the main guy is, uh, that makes this series. Uh, oh, fuck it. Um, <laughs> it's not worth looking into right now. Um, but yeah, it was a splinter company that made it, and it got a bad rap. Like, um, it was, oh, this is terrible, it's like, it's not actually from the real Silent Hill people, we don't care about it at all. Um, that being said, uh, it was on 360, so it looked prettier, and therefore was scarier. Um, and it played very, very similarly to any other Silent game, a Silent Hill game. And it was um, it was scary as well, and it had the psychological elements. This is a soldier that came back from war with PTSD. And his mother is catatonic, and he has to try and find his younger brother, and he has to try and find it by going through um, places in Silent Hill. My only gripe with the series, uh, that ep- oh, fucking hell, the series, <laughs> the episode. Say the words, Richie. My only gripe with that um, entry into the series yeah. is that they they put too many humans in it, um, and they take it straight from the film, as in there are army people who wear like gas masks and stuff like that who can live in the alternate version of Silent Hill. And it cheapens it a little bit. So it doesn't feel like uh, the projection of the psyche anymore. It's kind of like, uh oh, here comes the air raid. Everything's about to change into rust and blood. Everybody run, run and hide. And you're just like, what? why are you doing this? You know, like these are like the words that people actually said in the game. You're like, oh, that makes it rubbish. You know, <laughs> like. <laughs> just making it a bit transparent but obviously because it is something a different series and they were grabbing on to the one thing that the film had done um, so I guess it was that's why it happened um, but yeah uh, I, I thought it was uh, perfectly playable and enjoyable if a little bit annoying that it kind of shat upon the psychological protect- projection but if you just get round that bit and just think of them as enemies, which they end up being, 
You know, it's just these guys wearing these sort of gas mask things and you just shoot them or whatever. <laughs> um, then it's fine. Don't worry about it too much. Move on. Um, we've not talked about Pyramid Head, who's one of the yeah, more he's the most iconic. iconic. Mm. Yeah, he's the most iconic um, bad guy that you get in these games. Um, is that all there so, is to say about him? <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, there's so much on the internet about him um, and what he is in that game. He is James, but he's. James's guilt who's coming to creep up on him or things like that as well there's also like I remember one of the things that I had to sort of reach to the internet when I was sort of trying to understand what this game was and um, there's a point where James is in the apartment building and he walks into a room and you see a scene between Pyramid Head and the Leg Monster now the leg monster is just basically a pair of sexy legs and then an upside down pair of sexy legs where a torso should be so it's just kind of like a cross shaped legs thing and the internet seemed to come to the consensus that Pyramid Head was uh, sexually adva- taking advantage of this um, leg monster thing I still to this day kind of doubt that you know, um, I don't, I don't see that interpretation at all. I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about here? Yeah, yeah. It's the scene where you're in, essentially in a cupboard or yeah. somewhere watching. Yeah. And you're kind of going through it, and you, you're supposed to think that's what you're seeing, or it alludes to that. I mean, ultimately, Pyramid Head is wearing an apron um, that goes all the way down to his ankles. So I kind of like, I, and yeah. I, I know that there is supposed to be sort of um, sexual undertones or overtones um, in that game, but I never saw that. Um, but the, the internet chose to, and, and that's kind of talks about some of the other characters in the game, which have perhaps like been sufferers from abuse, and perhaps what James was struggling with in his head for whatever reason. Um, but it's one of those ones that's just like a very iconic scene people think Pyramid Head they think of him shagging the leg monster uh, and I, I don't know I, I never found it that interesting or believable like because again it's the internet that says this um, but there's also like there's lots of other scenes with Pyramid Head and they're so great like just like the very first time you see him is behind a sort of bit in the apartment which for some reason has a gate and he's just standing there and he can't see you you can't see him or vice versa sorry (laughs) he can't reach you you can't reach him um and you feel kind of safe but at the same time there's a creepy monster looking at you you go away you come back and it's gone oh okay great what's he um and then there's later points where you fight him and it's a really slow awkward fight where he's not very hard to beat because his one attack is sort of takes ages to power up and can only go in one direction so you just need to sort of run around in a circle and shoot him <laughs> you know um yeah. and then at the really, end of the um... game Hmm? Really, kind of, really kind of a uh, believability breaking. <laughs> you got this uh, traumatic, um, you know, version of your psyche that's that that you get various glimpses of, and is dragging this huge sword, and <laughs> essentially you end up circle straight. <laughs> straight yeah. <in. laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, sort of ruins it. Sort yeah. of ruins it. Or a little bit. Yeah. And then at the end of the game, uh, there's just two of them for some reason. With uh, Instead of swords, they've got sticks. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. And then I think I think it was so popular that um, we got various knockoff 
pyramid heads in some of the other games. I think Homecoming had one there. Yeah, they had like uh, what was it? In I think it was uh, was it not in Bogeyman. that one with Travis? You had Blockhead or something stupid like that. Yeah, <laughs> cylinder head and um, tetrahedral pyramid. head. <laughs> <laughs> Box heads. Um, <laughs> Dodecahedron head. Uh, <laughs> Spearhead. <laughs> uh, and eventually uh, it split off into the popular game Cuphead. Um, yeah, that's the origin. That's uh, yeah. Pyramid Head's origin story. <laughs> um, now, uh, these games I think were quite hard. Uh, and they were quite. Um, mentally taxing i think well after a while if you played them enough you can kind of you know you see through the matrix and they become a little bit less challenging because you know where things are um some of them had random elements uh but they're all but a few of them are known for having a range of different endings um depending on what you do sometimes you get an explicit are you going to save this person or this person and that messes up the ending um yeah. And very few of them are uh, what you might consider good endings. Uh, the good none ending, of them are the good, good endings. <laughs> none the of good them are. Is you hmm? killed yourself. The bad ending is you killed yourself and your daughter. Uh, the good plus ending is you killed yourself, your baby, and uh, it's somebody else. And the very good ending uh, is a uh, you destroyed Silent Hill. Um, yeah. And of course, there's always the joke endings. Yes, which I'm surprised, you know, even the, uh, if you like, uh, non-first party Silent Hills all have, um, maybe there's one or two that don't, all have this joke ending universe, which is kind of canonical to itself, and normally involving an alien, a dog, all the previous protagonists. Uh, and in one of them, I don't know if you've seen, uh, which is the one with the prison? Is that That's downpour. Downpour. Um, where Pyramid Head cuts a birthday cake? Oh, Pyramid Head in, in downpour. I didn't know that. Only, cool. only in the joke ending. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. he, he like escapes prison uh, and then Heather, Harry, uh, I think like one of the ghost girls and a couple of police officers are there. And then um, there's a birthday cake, and they throw him a surprise birthday, a surprise cake, and then Pyramid Head cuts the cake and the table in half. <laughs> Brilliant, fantastic! Uh, yeah, and he kind of, <laughs> and he kind of smiles, uh, and that's the end of that game. There are a couple of weird spin-offs. I don't know if you've played any of them. Um, most of them are Japanese, Japan only. So there's a GBA visual novel version of Silent Hill 1. <laughs> no way. <laughs> called Silent Hill Play Novel, which lists, uh, lifts um, just visual assets from Silent Hill that you kind of scroll through. I don't think they ever came out um, from Japan. There's an arcade game. Um, an arcade game. Then, tell, tell me yeah. more about this. Oh my! I hope it's like a uh, complete... I know very little. I know very little about it. Ah, uh, I'm really hoping my mind it is House of the Dead with the same mechanics, and you just run yeah. through Silent Hill, and you're just shooting monsters and big ass pyramid heads and blockheads and uh, <laughs> and weird baby monsters that shout and point at you. Ah, uh, excellent! It did, I really it's... hope that's the case. It is a <laughs> It is a light gun game. Oh, nice. <laughs> and uh, from a quick Google search, there does seem to be a bit where you have to shoot Pyramid Head. Excellent. Oh, I'm a happy bunny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's the thing. And there are also those pink bunnies in it as well. Okay, it pulls from quite a, quite a bit. Uh, and then there's Book of Memories. Did you play that one on the Vita? Uh no. <laughs> isometric. Oh, uh, you're kidding me! Game. 
No. <laughs> I love that. An RTS of Silent Hill. <laughs> yeah. Um, essentially. Uh, okay. So we've not no, we've not um, yeah we've not had hands on with any of those. Um, and then of course there are uh, sort of spiritual successes because we've not had a Silent Hill since Downpour. Um, I, do you remember that one came out? Uh, I want to say 2012. Oh, yeah, 2012. God, it really bad? Oh, Christ. Okay, so you've not had one for eight years. Um, there's Dementium the Ward, uh, which is, I think, the 3DS games. Was it a DS game? Okay. Uh, I've got it. Uh, which was pitched um, as, uh, you know, we could make... Um, to Konami, I think, or Team Silent, that you know, could this be a Silent Hill DS game? And they weren't interested with both one or two. Um, but that has lots of Silent Hill elements to it. Uh, it's really hard and creepy as well. It's, um, you know, normally with handhelds, uh, they don't tend to get quite as scary as when you're on the big screen. But Dementium the Ward is one of the ones which um, I did have to put down because I was getting too freaked out about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk it's away. Very hard. Walk yeah, away yeah, far away. <laughs> I'm going gonna, gonna to do this in the daytime rather than at night. Um, <laughs> um, totally. <laughs> so yeah, so Dementium the Ward is sort of um, a Silent Hill game. And then there's, of course, P.T., uh, uh, which sadly never came to anything, um, but is very creepy in a very silent hill way. Have you? Did you play PT? I didn't play PT, but I saw the um, I saw a YouTube video of it, and it was like uh, you went into a bathroom, and then there was a creepy kid, and then doors would slam and things like that. It was it not yeah. meant to be for like uh, VR or something like that? No, it was. Um, I don't know their plans. For it to be VR, but it was uh, okay. Or exclusively VR, but yeah, it was it was kind of a test bed, and it's very very clever because essentially it just gives you the same portal to keep going down. But every time you go down, things change. There's a hundred different things to try and find, and if you stand at this point when the clock does this and press this, then that triggers this thing here. Uh, but it has uh, all these kind of Silent Hill triggers. And because you're okay. just going down the same the same corridor over and over again, the lighting would change, or things would move around. Um, you start to hear a baby crying. You start to hear footsteps behind you. You turn around, and there was somebody there. Uh, so really, um, uh, uh, you know, spine chilling, um, yeah. hairs on the back of your neck, this kind of stuff. So uh, one thing that we have. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Unfortunately, I never went anywhere. So now it's one of those weird. I think I have it. One of those weird things that you can't get again, I think. So yeah, I mean, if it folded, it's probably not going to exist anymore. So so, yeah. but you could only download the this kind of taster demo. Uh, and then, yeah, it never went anywhere, and so now it's just something that's stuck rattling around old uh, PlayStation 3s, and uh, if it's you don't have one of those, that's it, you can't um, access it, although there are plenty of videos. Um, yeah, it's a shame we never really saw anything like that, although Resident Evil 7 feels very similar to it. Um, yeah, because they had that sort of first-person-y thing going on as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, 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 and the. I thought that's probably where I, I thought VR, because that one was VR as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. So, I mean, we've talked about the plot, we've talked about <laughs> the different effects in it, uh, but one thing that always stands out, and this is actually a rare thing for me, because with games I tend to play them on mute, but one thing that stands out for me is the audio in the um, the Silent Hill games. And it is really, really creepy, off-putting stuff. Um, I don't know. Like, is is there anything in particular that stands out to you on an audio sort of level from from the games as well, or is there anything? 
Yeah, the the main theme uh, is the James Bond theme. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? You should a, talk, a, talk more. <laughs> it, it, uh, it syncs up nicely with the James Bond theme, and there's a there's a riff in it, which is essentially just the James Bond theme. It's also like, a really good track. That bass line. <laughs> yeah. Are they okay? Um, down, down, down. Yeah, you can easily sing them up. Um, oh, from Silent Hill 2. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, Silent Hill 1. I don't know if they use the same theme. They got that sort of guitar-y bit. And, oh, okay. All right, okay, yeah. fair enough. Maybe, maybe it is different. Yeah. I think I think they use the theme in the film as well, which is one of the other things I like. Uh, so that's yeah, weird that a horror game has a good main theme. Well, it's not just that. Like I loved um, Silent Hill 4's main theme as well. They actually got like a woman singing it. I don't know if you remember that one. No, I don't remember that at all. Oh, it's a great theme tune, and it's just like. The lyrics are so fucking creepy as well. So it's like, I don't care enough for you to die. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> you're like, Jesus fucking hell. Brutal. Um, no, um, definitely, as soon as we get off this podcast, Google it. It's one of the best uh, sort of um, opening theme tunes, and the music is so creepy. But the music is so creepy across the whole... Um, series and it, it's not always even there like most of the time you're just dealing with radio static and silence um, and footsteps um, but yeah like they would just do so many things that would just like freak you out um, oddly oddly Od- audioly Audi- Audi- I don't know audioly <laughs> audioly yeah. um, like uh, in Silent Hill 2 I remember like <laughs> They used to put these sort of tricks in there as well. So if you were running sort of like a quarter of the time, whenever you would stop, you would hear another step. But it wasn't your step. So it was like you would <laughs> so you'd get this extra step and you wouldn't really register it, but something would, you know, off put you off as well. And, and this is another one, which might just be an urban legend, but apparently in Silent Hill 2, they put in sounds that only pets could hear mm-hmm. so your dog or your cat would start acting strange whenever you were playing Silent Hill 2 I love the idea of that as well just every yeah. so often you know like it, an enemy before an enemy is approaching your dog starts sort of looking at the TV or something yeah. <laughs> it does that does firmly sound like an urban uh, an urban legend though. yeah um and I guess the legacy of it, well, I think uh, some people have run with the ideas of Silent Hill, um, you know, especially on all these creepy fan-made games, I guess you can call them, um, where you use clever, sometimes cheap tricks of you know, using where your character's looking to make things temporarily appear. Uh, or have you know sound cues? Uh, yeah, those... yeah. Layers of Fear is a very, very good example of something that's yeah. taken a lot of inspiration from the Silent Hill games, but put it into a, an Unreal Engine or Unity Engine, whatever it is, um, and yeah. just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it's just that sort of scary. You're not looking at the camera. Uh oh, something's happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's a ball rolling across the floor. Um, but I think, yeah, instead of cheap, I, I don't know. I feel like there's space for that to be done really, really well, and we've not really, um, we've not really seen that space filled by anything quite yet. Uh, the kind of Silent Hill niche, um, yeah, and to, and to really kind of be a terrorizing game because we've said creepy and psychological and it might sound a bit trite but um there's probably better words for it but it is that um you know stuff that makes your the, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up yeah um so the definition or yeah. difference between resident evil and silent hill series or at least how it was for a long time was 
Resident Evil survival horror, whereas Silent Hill was psychological horror. You know, yeah. and and it it did it fucked with you not just with the main protagonist, and there was a lot of fucking with him or her, but it fucked with you, you know, as the player an awful lot as well. Yeah, um, and you know there are other games which have had a go at that. There's Eternal Darkness on the GameCube often gets name checked as, yeah. as one of those um, where, and it was, but it was it was very goofy. As I I do like Eternal Darkness, but it was. You know, you have an insanity meter that you see on the screen. <laughs> um, uh, and yeah. then all these, all these kooky things start popping up, including, you know, saying that the memory card has been wiped and stuff like that. Um, or uh, occasionally you'd just be running around and your character's head would fall off and the body would fall over. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was very... It's kind of a bit cat candid about it. Um, but yeah, nothing... nothing quite as spine chilling for me as Silent Hill would perhaps Forbidden Siren being the one exception um, Forbidden Siren remind me which one that's yeah. at that's the one which is set in a uh, Japanese mountainside village but you can tune into so you can see through the eyes of people around you okay so uh that's how it gets you because you'll be kind of it's, oh, it's, it's handled much better than I'm describing it but it's, <laughs> like tuning in. it's almost like you're tuning in a radio um, and you know you're really really weak it's, it's not like you're, you're fighting somebody so you really have to kind of stealth your way past and work out the kind of patrols of these crazy zombies but it's when you're flicking between uh, the NPCs to see through their eyes and then you see the back of your head and you're like, oh shit that means it's directly behind me um, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, that was one that really, really struggled to to put any time into. It was also hard as nails um, for that same kind of uh, unsettling feeling, but for a very different reason. I always, uh, I always lump it in with um, what's it called, Fatal Frame. Um, oh yeah, because. I like. I only ever played one of those games. I don't even know if they're still being made or if they're still around. But Fatal Frame for me was. Uh, it sounds very very similar to what you were sort of saying, where you can only see ghosts, but through a camera, and yeah. then you literally have to take a good picture of this freaky ass thing uh, <laughs> through your camera, and they can only hurt you when you're like looking through the camera as well. So it's kind of like. Oh, it, it, it's 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 a creepy game, but of course all the ghosts are like inspired by like um, Japanese horrors as well. So you yeah. get creepy floaty things and yeah, baby yeah. monsters and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Shattered Memories, I think, borrows an element of that. Uh, like I say, there are these strange shadows around as you're exploring the level, and they've all got horrible stories associated with them. So people who committed suicide or children who were kidnapped uh, and it's only when you kind of go up to them with your phone out and take a photo that that uh, you know this kind of noise builds so yeah it's the idea that things are out there that you can't see it's really disturbing yeah cool well I think unless you have anything more to talk about the silent level I mean we could have gone into way more depth and talked about all of the conspiratorial ramblings that you see on on, on the forums for this that and the next thing whatever silent hill uh forums or i don't even do forums even exist on the internet anymore farley i don't know i think it's it's all reddit it's those, and discord nowadays it's, all, it's one of those things that you uh yeah you invoke almost like a legend or a spirit or a myth no one does forums anymore <laughs> <laughs> Whoever so ran the Silent Hill forum, yeah. nobody. So That's what's the so creepy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a scape, a scapegoat for shit that happens online. Uh, yeah, the people in the forums are doing it. But yeah, I think uh, we're just kind of glossing over some of the games that we enjoyed and we played. I honestly think that um, Homecoming wasn't as bad as everybody gave it rap for, apart from that shit about people seeing both worlds. Um, but if you can forgive the films you can definitely forgive that game Downpour 
is embarrassingly still in its cellophane uh, <laughs> um, for my 360. <laughs> like, just never took it out of the cellophane. <laughs> which is uh, which is bad. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I dig that. And I mean, both of us would say that our favourite in the series, regardless of anything, is Silent Hill 4. Agreed? Uh, yeah, four or Shattered Memories, I think. Okay. Close. But yeah, I mean, definitely four for me. And I, 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 I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to go back and revisit that game um, now that I can play it again on the PC. Um, but we shall see. But yeah, yeah, okay. So, next time, we'll talk about something else. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Surely you must have known when the words next time came out of your mouth. I yeah, but sometimes your that mouth says things and you know. just have to run with it. We don't know yet. <laughs> next time we have no idea what we're talking about. Why did I? Why did I say next time? Yeah. Uh, next probably time. next time. Uh, I don't know. Next time, if there's a next time, <laughs> yeah. let's leave it on a more foreboding tone. If there's a next time, um, <laughs> we'll talk other games that are more gamey and have things and say goodbye Farley bye bye bye